You're listening to Secrets of a Bridal Seamstress podcast. I'm your host, Nadine Bozeman. In this podcast, I'm sharing business systems and strategies specifically tailored to the bridal sewing industry so you can build your own modern and profitable bridal alterations business. Join me as I also get to chat with fellow seamstresses and share their personal success stories. I'm so glad you're here and that we can grow together in this unique trade. All right, welcome Mm. back to another episode of Secrets of a Bridal Seamstress. I'm here with Kate McIver, and she is the personality behind Mm. The Confident Stitch. So if you've seen any of those reels that I've shared, this is the woman behind the reels. So let's start with that. Uh, When did you know that you were going to be, um, well, a celebrity with the reels? (laughs) (laughs) I didn't. I'm as surprised as anyone else that my one of my employees calls me a real prodigy yeah I, <laughs> I had no idea that I would be good at it but even my anti-social media husband says you think in memes like I just think in memes so like I have so many ideas all the time and one of my employees Maisie actually has her own theater company so for the more the the more kind of dramatic ones where we're splicing together tons of little scenes she definitely oversees that like i i'll have the idea and then she'll help me flesh it out and make sure that it's super polished that is so nice that you have a producer basically on your I know. <laughs> yeah that's that was lucky Oh, it's just so funny. And they're so relatable. I love people who giggle. Like, I feel like if I can giggle with somebody, we have an instant connection. And so when I see your reels, I'm literally LOLing. It's awesome. <laughs> so, and it's like such a little surprise. So <laughs> when did this, and I'm trying to think, I, I can't remember when I came across a reel for the first time, but how long has that been a part of the Confidence Stitch brand? A couple of years. Yeah. My first few I just did by myself and they weren't quite as good. And I knew from marketing people who I work with, you know, that you want to make people feel seen. Mm -hmm. And for me, that was a little bit of an esoteric concept until I nailed it. Yeah. Until you found your people and then you're like, okay, now I know exactly who I'm talking to and I know how to make them feel seen. (laughs) Yeah. And I do. I mean, I've known who my people are, but yeah, just like, how do you make them feel seen? And yeah, when the first reel that I did that people could really relate to in their own lives, I was like, oh, this is how I do it. And so. (laughs) And the rest is history. So and the rest probably, is history, yeah. <laughs> when this, uh, when this episode is released, we'll just be sharing a lot of reels in our Instagram stories. So if people haven't experienced them, they will after this podcast. Episode. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, now that we covered obviously the most important part of the conversation, mm-hmm. let's take it back to when did you fall in love with sewing? I love hearing this from different guests because I love hearing about who it was that influenced guests in their love of sewing or like maybe what the first project was that just like lit you up. So let's take it way back. Yeah. Well, I've always loved sewing. I mean, my grandma had a treadle sewing machine and it was really easy to sew on. You had so much control and you can go really, really slow. And I just spent hours on it and she would make my make Barbie clothes and I would just get to use all her old polyester scraps to make things. She was a very loud woman. And so she had lots of bright, just slinky polyester for me to play around with. (laughs) So (laughs) lots of slinky polyester. Was there a project (laughs) that you remember feeling so good about as like a young sewist and feeling like, oh my gosh, this, I think this is my thing. Like I, cause I, I remember like my first quilt that I made and it was like a little like wall thing. And I think I was like a freshman in high school and I was like, this is amazing. So do you have like a project that sticks out to you? Yeah. When I was in high school, there was some, I don't even remember what store my mom took me to. And it had this giant cloud, like stuffed cloud with a rainbow coming down and each each part of each color of the rainbow was a different tube Mm -hmm. that was stuffed Mm 
So it was like, I just thought it was the coolest thing. And I don't remember how much it was, but my mom was not going to buy it for me. And it's, it was like a seven foot tall cloud with rainbow. So you like would hang it really high on your yeah. ceiling or on your wall. And I was like, I'm going to make it. <laughs> and I did. I may I got all the fat you know I bought the fabrics and made the cloud and made all the rainbow each tube of rainbow stuffed them all and hung it on my wall and yeah it was exactly like what was in the store and I loved it that is so cool because I was expecting you to say like oh I made a dress or I you know made a like yeah doll clothes but like you made a seven foot rainbow to hang from your ceiling that's awesome <laughs> yeah it was yeah and at that same... had the ingenuity to be like okay as a high schooler you thought I can figure out how this is made and by just like looking at something and figuring out a pattern and that is that's really cool right. Yeah. Yeah. So did you earlier, when you're talking about your reels, you said you already knew who your people were. And so mm -hmm. maybe I'm skipping some steps along the way, but like, take us back to like, what inspired you to start the confidence stitch? Where did that fall into place in your career or different careers throughout your life? Right. How did you know, like who your people were? Well, I, so I worked in public health for 25 years and I always loved sewing. It was always my stress reliever. It was a big part of my life. But about 12 or 13 years ago, I discovered the Palmer Pletch method of altering patterns to make them fit. And my mind was completely blown. I just fell in love because I just love the idea that we don't have to change our bodies to fit the clothes we can change the pattern to fit our bodies and we don't need to be we don't need to go on a diet we don't need to exercise 12 hours a day you know we're <laughs> we are okay just who we are and we can accept that and we have power Mm -hmm. and, I, we and don't I have think this is gonna resonate so much with our listeners who sew for brides who constantly have right. this conversation where it's like okay and then even if you do exercise 12 hours a day that's not going to give you like a different shape necessarily like sometimes you right. know just, I have a bride in my uh line right now and she's she has like a really incredible figure like you think of like weight being distributed in all the right places this mm -hmm. is her and because of the way the dress was constructed, the waist is so long and she's super short waisted. I mean, she's like five, two and like itty bitty, like, like mm -hmm. <laughs> bodice. <laughs> so when she bought the dress, like there's just all this fabric bunching and like gathering on top of her bum and it's, oh, it just looked kind of like a mess, but she had the vision and she still right. purchased it. So we just, you know, shortened the waist literally three and a half inches. And now it's like, oh my gosh, we can see like your body for what it is. So even like when we do the work of the diets or the workout, sometimes just your figure is not going to match the way that the pattern's made. So right. you were freed from that. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I just love, I, and one of my daughters sometimes feels bad about her body when she tries on clothes and uh, to say, you know, these are pieces of fabric sewn together by someone who's never met you. Mm. You cannot let fabric make you feel bad about yourself you know why don't give it that power that is because so good. you need to frame just, that like that needs to be one of your quotes that, like you sell or something that is so good say that again you can't let fabric make you feel bad about your body it's just fabric that somebody who's never met you sewed together mm -hmm. and wasn't thinking about you at all <laughs> yeah you know, they don't, you don't know them. They don't know you. And yeah, it's just so easy to go into a dressing room and try things on and say, I suck. Mm -hmm. You know, look at this. Mm -hmm. This, this mm -hmm. looks terrible on me. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just got really, really energized by the idea that we have the power to alter the pattern to make it fit. And there's no shame in that. Mm hmm you know, your itty bitty gal, she needs to alter the dress. Mm -hmm. 
you know, and why should she feel ashamed? No, no, right. none of us should. Right, right. So when did you, I, I'm, I'm gathering that that kind of became, you know, just a more um, intentional way to sew for fun. Once you found those skills, when were mm-hmm. you like, you know what, I'm going to quit my job and, and sew. Because <laughs> right. I did the same right. thing. I was a middle school choir teacher for nine years. And I was like, I oh, wow. Or like, I want to sew and whatever led me into my second career. So I have a bond with people who <laughs> sew as a second career choice. <laughs> yeah. Well, just a lot of things came together as I think it happens for everyone. My husband was retiring from work and he wanted to move to Missoula. We were living in Helena, Montana. And so I knew I was moving to Missoula and I'd have to leave my job. And there was a good fabric store in Missoula that had closed down. And so I kind of saw that gap. And yeah, so it was like one thing led to another and I opened a fabric shop. Wow. And you make it sound so easy, like, well, there was a need for a fabric store, so I just opened it. And that there's so much involved in that because most of our listeners are bridal seamstresses, so it's service based. You don't need to, you know, uh, invest in retail. But we know how big of an investment fabric is, and like investing in a variety. So, how about you walk us through the guts it took to do that? Like, <laughs> Tell us it was a lot of guts. And cons list. Yikes. Yeah. So I did have a lot of savings and I don't anymore. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm fine. But <laughs> yeah, I I didn't realize, I think lots of times we entrepreneurs, we don't realize what a big risk we're taking mm-hmm. when we take it. So yeah, it was just, you know, I... I really wanted to have a variety of fabrics. I felt that I needed to meet the needs of a lot of different audiences. Like I couldn't just, especially in Missoula, but as you know, we're, our whole store is online as well. Mm-hmm. But I didn't think I could just say, you know, I'm selling taffeta and that is it. I had to have quilting fabric and garment fabric and bag fabric as well and also carry patterns for all of those things so it was a lot to bite off and and I just want to interrupt and say you do each of those so well because (laughs) especially I know it's been it's been a while since you've opened up the shop but looking Mm -hmm. at your website now, looking at your social media now, you serve each audience really well. So you'd almost stumble across one of your quilting reels or, you know, Mm -hmm. your page and you feel like that is a quilting specialty store. And then you come Mm -hmm. across like a tip that you share about like making clothing or altering patterns. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, this is like a clothing fabric boutique. You know what I mean? So it's like, that takes artistry in itself to like, be so intentional about each piece of the business. So keep going, but yeah. You do that. Well, so I, I mean, it, I think what comes through is I really am passionate about all three or all kinds of sewing. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's pretty easy for me to think that way because I care about all of them. Yeah. And I'm, you know, in awe of people who can do them well. And so that, that part has been easy. It's just, I, I just didn't realize how, like how much inventory you have to have and how long it takes to churn through that inventory, Mm -hmm. you know? So it's not, I listened to a podcast and Costco turns over its inventory 12 times a year. So every month they sell everything in the store. Wow. I know. So they're making a lot of, yeah, but. (laughs) For me, you know, it takes a while to sell a bolt. Mm -hmm. And so that's just, that was, I guess I didn't know enough about business to know that that would be challenging, Um, but it is. And, but I love it. I mean, I'm so passionate about quality fabrics and about the, the power that we have Mm -hmm. to make ourselves things that fit and are made of good natural fibers and will last a long time. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm passionate about the quilting too. And I love modern quilt patterns Mm -hmm. uh, or modern quilt prints, which is a gap here in Missoula. But I think also 
nationwide, a lot of people don't have access to really fun, modern, bright prints. Yes. Oh yeah. There's a really, I'm in Olympia and mm -hmm. Portland, Oregon has really cool fabric shops. And like, mm -hmm. I'd, I'll take the drive to head down there if I want like really fun fabrics. So there, there's another place that's like closer to my house, but I know exactly what you're talking about. To understand what fine quilting fabric is and then having like a little haven just to shop there is awesome. I want to kind of go back to touching back to your original life, your original career in healthcare. It was, you know, you're helping people, you are like serving others and you're doing the same thing now just with textiles. Right. Right. So can you share any stories of how you've been able to help specific people or like you've seen that same gratification that you had working in healthcare and like helping others and that translating into like the world of creativity? Well, yeah, I mean, I do private lessons and help people alter patterns to make them fit and it's just, it makes people so happy. And I mean, when I, my favorite story is when I took a Palmer Pletch class and I wasn't actually helping the woman, but she was in my class with me and she had lost her job. She was an engineer and she, so she'd been for 20 years wearing polo shirts and dockers. And then she was gonna have to interview for jobs and she couldn't find a dress that fit her. Mm -hmm. And Patty and Marta helped her fit three dresses during the class. So she was, they were all pin fit and fabric ready to go. And when they pin fit that third one, she just burst into tears because she was like, I have confidence now that I can apply for a job, mm -hmm. interview for a job and get a new job and mm -hmm. I'm going to be okay. And it was just so powerful for me. And I'm sure you have that too with the bridal stuff where, you know, a woman will feel like I'm not going to be a beautiful bride because blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And you can, you can help her get there. Oh yeah. It's very, it's so fulfilling. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when, you know, I tell people what I do, they're like, oh, you work with brides, bridezillas, like their mind goes to that. But it's like, I mean, I can think of like, you know, I can count on one hand out of the hundreds of brides that I've worked with, you know what I mean? That have been bridezillas, but it's like, it's so fulfilling and you see that confidence journey, you know, like from like when they mm -hmm. put the dress on, they know the dress is pretty, but they're like, oh, I don't like this part of my arms. Or And then mm -hmm. even what's so cool is I love when, because usually I start from the top down of the dress between the mm -hmm. first and second fitting, I'll alter the top. And then between, you know, second and third, that's when it's hemmed. So when they come out, in their final fitting and just the dress is their length. I don't know why that is so emotional for them. Cause they're like, it fits me. They're not playing dress up. You know what I mean? So something right. as simple to us is like, okay, hemming a dress to your length is so powerful. Mm -hmm. And we just don't I, know what it feels like to have something that fits us. Well, you know what I, mean? I know. Yeah. I know. The first, like how transformative that can be. <laughs> the, the first shirt I made that I did, I did a, a high round back adjustment on and so that the shoulder seams were sitting in the right spot, I found myself like constantly like trying to fix it and like realizing that it was a habit. Yeah. You know, that I was constantly like repositioning the shoulder seams on my shirts because they were never right. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, they're in the right spot and <laughs> I don't need to adjust it. <laughs> I could just walk around. It's fine. I could just walk around. Exactly. <laughs> so do you like to buy clothing new and alter it? Or do you really like to create everything from start to finish? Everything from start to finish. Ooh, what is, are, so you made the shirt that you're wearing. Yeah, this is a, yeah, this is a fun, this is from Liesl and Co. One of their t-shirts and they have, they have three different fronts depending on your cup size. I so. So they kind of do the full bust adjustment for you. Mm -hmm. but, do you have um, favorite uh, indie pattern designers? Because we're going to make a list. Because I, I already oh. have I've been keeping some notes of things that you've already been mentioning, like, you know, just in conversation. So we'll have a little recommendation list in your notes here. <laughs> okay. Well, 
I I do love all the ones we carry. I'm really careful to just carry ones that are well drafted. Mm-hmm. But if I had to pick some favorites, I really like grain line patterns. Mm-hmm. I love their little booklets. Like I yeah. feel like that is, and it's so like user friendly because I I still work as a coral conductor in my area. So mm-hmm. I work with youth choirs. And so high school girls that want to learn to sew or there there's two that come to mind right now and they're just sewing fun projects. And I lead them to grain line because it's like, you can start like with what you have, like the, their right. stitch skills and it's so user-friendly and they have like three patterns. I feel like that are great for beginners. And you have this really cool right. piece that you made, you know? Okay. So. Right. And that. I'm, yeah, I'm using one of those for I'm going to teach a what you need to know before you start sewing clothes. I'm mm-hmm. teaching that on Saturday and I'm going to use a grain line pattern as my example to kind of because it it does explain things so well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love Liesel and Co patterns and she's coming out with so many. It's my Liesel and Co Co drawers are jam packed, so I have to like get a third drawer for her (laughs) um but she has really nice styles and good instructions the most popular brand that we carry is merchant and mills Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. i don't know uh, i've never used one of those yet but i've I've yeah yeah they're very they're very good they're well super well drafted the instructions are pretty good they're british so sometimes they use slightly different vocabulary but like Almost all their things don't have any closures. They're just super, super nice and easy. And people love Merchant Mills. Yeah. I I feel like I've lost my, well, I lost my time. I didn't lose my time. I, I didn't make enough time for my me sewing once, you know, mm-hmm. bridal sewing really picked up. And so last year I'm like, I got to get back to this because I know I love it. And it brings me so much joy. And so last year I took out my favorite blouse and, you know, just self-drafted and I made like three of the same thing. And I actually cried when I finished the first one because I was so happy. And it's like, yeah. I forgot how much joy this brings me, you know? So it's like, I've been collecting some, I have a Q dress, a Nina Lee Q dress that I'm looking at that I want to bust out. And it's like, I have my little stack. And so it's like, okay, prioritizing time. So if you're listening you know, professional mm-hmm. sewists who are listening, it's so important to prioritize that creativity. And we've had um, Faith St. Jules and Mimi G on here talking about the importance of setting aside time to make things for yourself and just enjoy the craft again. And how do you right. do that as like, you're constantly making all kinds of things and you're teaching and you're being a real queen. So it's like, when do you, and how do you prioritize the fun play time? I know. Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> please let us know in the comments how you do it <laughs> um yeah it's really hard um I got a puppy a little bit less than a year ago and so you know the puppy's not allowed in the sewing room or yeah. on the second floor so it's like puppy or sewing that's hard I know puppy or sewing and then also if I'm not taking care of the puppy, then my husband has to kind of pay attention to the puppy. And I feel bad that I work all the time and he's retired. And so I I need to either train the puppy to lie down in the sewing room while I'm sewing mm-hmm. or something like that. But yeah, yeah, right now I'm I'm a little bit flummoxed mm-hmm. <laughs> to finding time to sew for me. Yeah. Uh, it's really, really hard. And I'll, I'll go through periods where I'm better, where I'm, I do better. But right now, yeah, I have this half done, gorgeous grain line archer button up. Mm, that's on my that I, too. <laughs> yeah, that I totally, it's, I did tons of alterations to it. It fits me like a dream and I want to wear it. I made it out of 108 wide quilting cotton. So it's this like huge floral. It's gorgeous, but I don't know when I'm going to have time to finish it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the struggle is real. 
Yeah. So if you're listening, if anything, you know that you're not alone. So you're not alone. <laughs> you don't have time to sew for fun. It's just like, okay. And, and and like literally right next to me, I have some toweling fabric because I do love making like cloth napkins. Like I love it for our house. I love it as mm. like a gift, you know? And so I like just to crank those out. And I also like projects that just let me like play with different fabrics and then finish something. And then I can buy some new fabric. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what I mean? like, <laughs> right. okay, now I can play with this. And like, I love the little toweling fabrics for that reason. Cause it's like the, like the moda, the cute, like vintage moda. Yeah. They're so mm-hmm. fun. So I'm like, oh, I think we need this color now. Okay. Oh, somebody's getting a new house. Okay. And it whipped yeah. these up. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. So I don't know if there's anything left for you to accomplish with the confidence stitch. Oh, <laughs> I also want to tell you, I bought the, like the advent calendar and it was oh, the best uh-huh. of my December. So thank you. But it's kind okay. of cool because it's, it's not even Advent. It's like a countdown calendar. So you can get it for like a birthday or for like any holiday. Mm. I used it as my Advent calendar and I love those things. And it was such an awesome deal. I have so many labels. Right. So yeah. once again, we'll be sharing that. But anyway, I digress. So if you can think of anything that you would like to share with the world through Confidence Stitch or where would you like to see it in three years? just bigger and better than what it is now. And we didn't talk about our swatch service. So it's actually a swatch experience. Let's um, do that now. Okay. So <laughs> for gar- for clothing, we have the garment for you swatch experience. And Every season, every three months, you get a card with 10 swatches on it, and you can pick cool tones or warm tones, depending on your tone, and the card can make a capsule wardrobe for the season. So we have the fabrics that all go together in a really creative way, and patterns to suggest to make out of them and if if anyone were ever to have that kind of time they could get all the fabrics and all the patterns and make a capsule wardrobe for oh gosh, the I love that I love that and yeah so it's a great way to actually touch our fabrics and really see the colors so you get a little swatch and then your audience probably doesn't need this but underneath each swatch we say what how much it shrinks what needle to use what any kind of special stitches you might want to use obviously how much it is how wide it is and this some like a tip or just a little tip for sewing with it if there's Mm -hmm. anything tricky at all I love that idea because it takes, I mean, it's still fun and creative and playful and you can still pick and choose what you want to do, but it takes the overwhelm out of it of like, okay, I'm going to sit down and find a project and then find fabric with it. Like I kind of love the idea of these up and coming like subscription boxes for creative projects each month, like sewing Mm -hmm. boxes. And this is kind of along the same lines, but it gives you more leeway of what you want to make you're not getting something right. every single month like I right like yeah you're that. not building up a stash or yes, um, yeah. anything overwhelming like that and how long have you been Maisie doing and oh how long uh four or five years we've been doing really? it for a while wow yeah awesome. and Maisie and I also make a video for each card a separate video showing the fabrics how they drape and showing them like right next to each other and talking about each fabric in depth Mm -hmm. okay well this will definitely be in the show notes and I think Mm -hmm. listeners will be like oh I want to do that even if even for just the fun of having something come in the mail and it's like fun colorful fabric that's not like bridal (laughs) Like, right, right, like right. And, my life. <laughs> yeah. And I think, you know, when you're sewing for people and you need to order fabric, it's just nice to know like, oh, okay, a bamboo knit feels like this or the quilting cotton companies are starting or have been making like rayon substrates out of the quilting, the same prints mm-hmm. and also canvas substrates. And it's nice to feel like, oh, okay, if it's from RJR, it's going to feel, the the rayon will feel like this. If it's from Robert Kaufman, it'll feel like that. Mm-hmm. And so you can really kind of get a good feel for 
what you're get, what you're going to get if you order if you order something that's the same brand and same substrate. Mm -hmm. That's a super smart idea. That's awesome. And I will say that just like, your website has a lot of fun areas to play in. Like there's just lots of fun stuff to look at and like kind of get lost in. So and yeah, good, <laughs> like very fun and colorful and welcoming. Yeah, there's lots of stuff to click on. So, and you host um, online sew alongs, and you're great at just being very present with your online audience. So, do you have something coming up that our audience could kind of get plugged in with later on this summer, maybe, or what's on the docket for maybe June through August? Just there'll be a lot of fun reels. We have a lot on the back or not on the back burner, but waiting to be published. Which is and impressive. The rest of us are like, I gotta get something made for today. And you're like, oh, yeah. I have a summer's worth of content. Just waiting, waiting to drop. <laughs> I know. Well, that's the thing. I, all the, the social media people are like having trouble thinking of what to say. I'm like, no, <laughs> having trouble <laughs> dialing in <laughs> a doable amount of things to say. <laughs> well, what I'm secretly working on, which will not drop for a while, is a video fitting series. That's I'm doing a fitting series in the store once a month, um, doing a demonstration so that I can get feedback, real time feedback from people mm -hmm. to know what was helpful and what they're going to what they're going away with. And so that I can put together a curriculum to post on YouTube, mm -hmm. but it probably won't be till mid next year before it's I really start to doing that. Time with that kind of stuff, like, and get the feedback and know it's translating well and know it's actually serving people before you just kind of throw something out there. So I appreciate that right. you're taking time with it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's, yeah, and we just want to grow. We want to grow our swatch experiences. We also have a quilting cotton one, and yeah, we're just trying to trying to keep doing what we're doing, but bigger grow. scale. Yeah, you know what's yeah. working. Like, how do you get it to more people? Like, you know, people love it. Right. So just getting it out there. Okay, right. final question. Well, actually, I have two final questions. The first one: What is your ideal weekend? Oh, Even it doesn't include gosh. sewing. Dream weekend. No, like maybe money's not a, a consideration. Work isn't, you know, right. waiting for you. Mm -hmm. My dream weekend would be a long hike with my puppy early, like 6 or 7 a.m. Get out. <laughs> no sleeping in on the weekend. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, he doesn't let me. So yeah, early <laughs> hike with the puppy maybe an hour or two my husband may will make me great breakfast and then I would go up to my sewing room I have a beautiful sewing room mm. with a night a really good machine lots of space and I would listen to murder podcasts and that's right <laughs> sew away and maybe maybe we'd have some friends over for dinner but my husband would do all the work sounds good that sounds and good. have a fun dinner with friends and then the next day get up early hike and go to my sewing room I think that's a sign that you know you've chosen the right career path <laughs> <laughs> right it's your dream weekend <laughs> okay and final question what has been your best kept secret this is secrets of bridal seamstress so what's been your best kept secret as a sewing business owner a sewing entrepreneur my best kept secret mm -hmm. that we're going to now tell the world. So <laughs> I know <laughs> definitely make sure you get eight hours of sleep at night. I just haven't found the secret to um, leaving work at work and not worrying about it at home. I mean, I wish, I wish that could be my secret, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but it's not. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I'm just having such a good time. Uh, doing something that's so unique and and mission driven for me, mm -hmm. you know, I do feel that I'm helping people, and so yeah, follow your passion, but make sure you have a big savings account. 
I love it. You need to be a little more thoughtful before you take the plunge. Cause I, you said that early on about, we don't realize sometimes how big the risk is because I think mm -hmm. if we did, we wouldn't do anything right? <laughs> because it's like, ah. you know, when I look back to, to like when I quit teaching and it's like, at that point, my, my little side hustle was built up enough. And honestly, mm -hmm. replacing my teaching salary wasn't difficult. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it was still like, I didn't know what the heck I was doing. You know, even like mm -hmm. when I like got the keys to my brick and mortar, I'm like, oh, okay, here we go. You know, when you think of all the things that could go wrong, you wouldn't do anything. <laughs> right. That's true. And I guess in the, my big secret is that marketing is way more important than you, than you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it is really hard to get found mm -hmm. and really hard to get your message across. And I tried a lot of things before I landed on my reels and got my staff excited about them too. Mm -hmm. And kind of that we all realize that it's part of our job that we need to do it. And, and I just, yeah, I think it's, you have to understand at least a little bit, if not a lot about marketing to have your own little business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great tip. And we have a few episodes about that. We have trainings about mm -hmm. that within our membership. And so, but I think that's one of those things that is very frequently overlooked. Like, oh, I'll just kind of start and it'll work itself out, especially yeah. with an online business like what you have and being, mm -hmm. uh, being able to kind of cut through all of the other like retail uh, fabric shops online or yeah. So being able to right. slice the competition, that's a skill in itself. In itself. Right. Skill set in itself. Right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Well, thank you. I, I'm really excited to get this message or this episode out because, you know, well, you're a celebrity. So, and also <laughs> like, I just, I love hearing the story behind people that I feel like are so cool. And then it's like, it's a very relatable story. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Which I really appreciate. So, and like I said earlier, I appreciate that you and I have this bond of quitting the first career to pursue the second one and it worked. So yeah, yeah, it's been, it's wonderful. I'm just having, I'm having the time of my life and it's just, I, I had no idea how fun it would be, but it is so fun. I can tell, I can tell that you totally enjoy what you do. So that's very inspiring. Where can listeners find you? At the confidence ditch.com is our website and our Instagram handle is the confidence stitch, all one word. And if you're ever coming through Missoula, Montana, we are have a brick and mortar store in downtown. E super easy to find, super easy to walk to. And we'd love to see you in the shop. Yeah. And Montana's just a road trip for me. So yeah. I can make it over there sometime this summer. Yeah, I was just I actually I didn't realize you were in Olympia because I was just in Seattle over the weekend and came back. I went to Seattle and came back by car what yeah it's like 11 hours 10 hours I don't know because I sleep till Spokane <laughs> we leave really yeah. early I sleep until we no it's Spokane. it's seven hours oh maybe I'm just thinking of Bozeman Bozeman's yeah, yeah. Okay, well, even better okay we're doing that for summer I'm, I'm stocking up with the confidence ditch all right okay. thank you Kate MacGyver Yay. thank you thanks <laughs> Thanks for listening to today's episode. If you like what you heard, please subscribe and share this podcast with a friend. And if you're feeling really generous, leave a review. Thanks, everyone.